So I and not think, just repeat business or even referrals. That's you know? right. It will impact your referrals, not just repeat business. Impacts referrals. I mean, and, and it even goes as far as you know, if somebody starts to go online and type in negative reviews. I mean, then you're really going to be hurt because you won't even get phone calls anymore. You know, people won't call your your company anymore. Uh, so it's just important, and uh, you guys are on the same page. You know, you understand that. So. Oh yeah, man. Um, because if that happens and we make an excuse and we don't we don't do what we say we're going to do for a client, how they're not going to utilize our services. Number one, number two, they're likely going to make a video and put it on social media about Rockstar Entrepreneurial Starters is full of shit. That's not good for any for us. Terrible. Uh, and and they're also going to tell people, yeah, you don't really want to work with these guys. They're not very serious. Exactly. So and that that's exactly what we want to avoid. So Josh, I completely agree with you, and I want to thank you for uh, everything you've done for us as far as you know, guiding me and teaching me to be more professional and um, all that stuff. It's really helped me a lot. It's helped my self-esteem a lot, my confidence, and I think it helps articulate me a lot better as a business owner um, as well. You know, I mean, I can love the music, but I, I have to be professional as well. So I can have the best of both worlds, you know? Absolutely, man. Well, you've done great. Uh, you're a little hesitant to internalize it, but once you did, man, you embrace it. I think it's been great for you. So. Yeah, cool. Thanks, Josh. You're the man. <laughs> it's rare, though. Taking action these days is rare. And, uh... Let me Sean real quick. Yeah, taking action these days is extremely rare because a lot of people will make promises, especially on the internet. I've seen this. Or they'll do A, B, and C, and then they won't take action. You can take action consistently on whatever you do without making an excuse. It'll make a huge impact impact in what you do um, and I'd love to hear from either Carl or Steve uh, if you want to um, you guys get some of your thoughts on this how do you deal with either not making excuses or legitimate excuses what do you do with this? who do you want me to unmute Kareem either Steve or Carl both I'll unmute Steve first alrighty Steve you're up man Hey, uh, I just want to say, because, you know, for me, it, it, it's a tough thing. Uh, the other person was talking about excuses versus alibi. Francis, yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I, I tend to think of it as reasons versus excuses, and the excuses are like the flimsier things, you know, uh, like I had a bad hair day or I stuck my toe this morning, that's why I didn't meet a 5 o'clock deadline. But a reason would be like, I just got a call that my kid was leaving school, got hit by a car. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. At the same, at the same time, I mean, I'm a father of four kids. None of them live in the same spot, so when I pick them up for visits, it's, there's a lot of travel time factors. Sure. You know? <laughs> sure. But, but the guy who, you know, found my website offering freelance writing services doesn't care about that. He wants to. You know, his screenplay edited or whatever he wants. You know. True. So you gotta, you gotta. I, I think back to the movie uh, Pursuit of Happiness with uh, Will Smith. He portrayed that real life guy who he would go in there. It was like an internship with, the, and he was doing the stock market stuff and all of that. Great film. Great I, film. Yeah, and I thought about it. I'm like, he. He had to run all around to try to find a place, you know, a shelter that would take him and his son, and then get bus all over it. But when he got in there, like if he didn't meet a goal for the day, he didn't say, "Oh yeah, sorry, I had to run all around and get my son and do this." He just went in and did it. If he didn't do it, he tried. You know what I mean? He just kept pushing himself and uh, didn't complain. Didn't try to, you know, if he didn't hit a goal. He didn't bring uh, his personal stuff into it to be like, I didn't hit it because of this or that, you know? And that, that amazed me. <laughs> First cool. of all, that's like, like I had to call out of work. Uh, mm -hmm. I didn't get to tell my supervisor until 10 o'clock at night because something happened with my son and I had to go to family court the next day unexpectedly to try to, you know, yeah. try to uh, get emergency custody of him. And they, they, they wouldn't... Uh, 
they didn't, they didn't even, they weren't interested. You know what I mean? They're like, no, you weren't here, and there's only six people in this office. You have, three, you know what I mean? So, yeah. it, it sucks. It is tough. These things are, they're real concerns. Yes, yes, yeah. those are those are yeah. real reasons, legitimate reasons for for a project yeah. or a task getting interrupted when you have a family. And I just want to support Steve with this statement. I'm going to say. Steve, if I was in a business partner of yours and you had said, Chris, unfortunately, I can't finish this project on time because A, B, or C has happened with my kid, I'd be the first one to say, you know what, dude, it's cool. Go, go look after your kid, man. We'll touch base in a few days or whatever. And I think that those kinds of people that don't understand and they give you the gears about shit like that, those are people with, that have no compassion in their hearts. And those are the kinds of people that uh, aren't going to be successful in business because the essence of business is compromise. So yep. if people aren't willing to compromise with you because you have legitimate reasons for something, then they're not they're not good people. You know what I mean? So I don't think but that... I, go ahead. I was just going to say, at the same time, though, I recognize the fact that, like, you know, like uh, Kareem told you, I study Wing Chun. Very cool. Yeah. I, rec I, I recognize the fact that if I don't train and then uh, I don't develop the proper skill level, and then I go out, say I go out on a date with my girlfriend and we're at a bar and some guy thinks I'm looking at his girlfriend and swings at me, he's not going to care that I didn't train. He's not going to say, oh, wait, you didn't train enough? Yeah. Let's fight next week. You know what I mean? So it's tough. <laughs> yeah, it is tough. You know, the world, the world isn't wait for you to have the skill level you need. And mm -hmm. you often do get it after you needed it. <laughs> true. Very true. <laughs> but, uh, that's cool. my thoughts on it, though. <laughs> cool. Um, just a quick note before we continue. Um, I th in, the, in the next portion of the show, I'm going to talk about what I originally was going to discuss was on overnight success not being a reality. Uh, we're going to touch base on that too. But uh, I want to hear from either Mr. Sean Chun or Carl Davis on how they've begun to incorporate no excuse living into their lives. So I'm going to unmute Carl first. Uh, how you uh, no, I'm not because this TV is going. Sean Chun, you there, buddy? I believe he's on a call, actually. Okay, nice. well, Carl needs to mute if he's going to talk because I have all that background noise when I'm trying to edit and it's not fun. Yeah, Carl, if you could just turn down your radio or TV or. Please and thank you. And um, while we're waiting to see if Carl's. Un uh, got his TV muted. Um, I also know that a number of years ago it was very difficult for me to incorporate no excuse living and this is a habit I've been practicing for the last two years and I, hey, I'm still guilty sometimes I make excuses uh, Kareem's guilty, sometimes he makes excuses, I mean we're all we all do it still, but I think the point is is to not let it become a destructive habit and like Josh said if you're in business with people and you've got clients and you make excuses to them they're not going to order your services again so it's very important that you practice it now and nip it in the bud as much as you can so that you make excuses less and less and less each day of your life Carl you're are you there I'm here now. I'm sorry. That's fine, my friend. Go ahead. Um, I believe that an excuse is something that oftentimes people come up with because they really don't want to do it. You know, they'll, so they'll come up with an excuse so they won't have to do it. Many times, I mean, there's been times that I, 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 I didn't want to do something, so I just made an excuse. And there was actually no alibi. There was no reason other than I just didn't want to do it. Now, some people are actually like that. If they don't want to do it, they can't come right out and say, well, I don't want to do it. Instead, they got to make an excuse to, so that they pull themselves out of the situation, I guess you could call it. And an alibi is when you, you have something that is very, very important to you and you have to 
be there for like if you had a meeting in a business like i just wanted Dodry to come in here and he says no i'm in a meeting with in skype i said oh i understand i understand because he was on a meeting with a supervisor so sometimes you kind of have to bow out of it even though you know it's good for you uh, i don't know if that makes a lot of sense but you know i mean this is good for me and oftentimes i've bowed out of it thinking that i'm not going to bring something of value to your show and that's not always the truth so because i do bring value yes you do okay but i'll just sit there rather than saying no i don't bring any value i just say oh no i can't make it when all actualities i i could have made it mm -hmm. you know and so i think as humans we tend to make excuses because we don't really want to come right out and tell people the reasoning or whatever mm -hmm. you know like a like a green individual for instance that you know he's deep into his analytical stuff and he doesn't want to be bothered and it's a bother to him so he just i don't have the time to do it or you know i mean that's the way i take his excuses you know i mean i've made so many excuses over the years that that are just completely stupid I, I really should have just said i know it's good for me i need to be there i love the people and i want to see if there's anything i can do to bring betterment to the show or sure the meeting or whatever sure. you know, I mean, i'm not thinking of myself but sometimes i don't know sometimes you get into a negative aura and you kind of think that you're not worthwhile you know, you know, I, I see so many brilliant people on this show. Sometimes I say, well, you know, and, and, I, and, I, and I'm putting an A plus on this show. I mean, the show is, is awesome that way. I mean, it's got things in here that we all need, either mind management or, or business. Like last week taught me a lot, you know. Sure. Um, all them th things right there. I mean, I could have missed if I didn't jump on here, but Kareem, he wasn't the type of person to really push down my throat, but it was like, I could feel that he was right, that I really needed to be there. I mean, now if I, I mean, I could have many a times, I mean, I, I had a tooth out on Thursday. Now, now, as far as I'm concerned, if you can't talk, you got gauze hanging out of your mouth, that's not appropriate time to do it. So you kind of got to say, well, I got to, I got to bow out because I can't, I can't talk loud enough. I can't talk clear enough, what have you. And I thank you for letting me speak, Chris, because sure. oftentimes I feel like I'm not bringing what I should to the meeting. And, and it's not all about that. It's about what you can learn from others about the same things that you're talking about. I mean, like, I, I've learned so much from you. You're so, you're so smart as far as book reading, as far as bringing it to the people. I mean, I mean, Kareem has been so awesome to me too. I don't know Dan that well, but you know, Kareem has been there wishing me Merry Christmas or what have you over the years. Nobody else really wanted to bother. He didn't make any excuses. He just was there like a shoulder to lean on sometimes. Mm -hmm. You know, but I really love you guys, and well, I do, man. often feel that I don't bring what I should. Oh, and that's not true. I, I got to stop thinking that way because that's, that's right. just negative. That's right. That's just negative because even if I can't bring anything that's really of much value, there's so many other people that can bring value to me. Well, let me give you some words of encouragement, Mr. Davis. And I okay. hope this encourage. I said, let me give you some words of encouragement. Okay. Go ahead. And I, and I hope this encourages you. You are unique, just like everyone here. So whatever your viewpoint is on what we're talking about adds value. That's the point of a mastermind. It doesn't matter what it is. If it's positive and constructive, it adds value. And I want you to know that. Whatever you have to say, if it's positive and constructive, it adds value. 